Hi everyone and welcome along. Today we're going to do another really simple landscape, a lovely summery beach scene with some kite flying. Uh, we're going to use a little bit of masking fluid in this, so make sure you've got that handy. Uh, but without much further ado, let's grab our paints and let's get started. So I have taped my paper down all around the edge with washi tape. It's a uh, eight inches by six inches or A5, um, which is about 21 by 14.8 centimeters. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find um, two horizon lines. So I've got the line for the edge of the beach and then a little bit more, which is gonna be our water. But I want the sky to be the the key thing here because we're going to have a, a kite flying. So I'm gonna have a little figure standing on the beach just around here and so let's draw them. So we're going to have a, a little torso and a line that comes down to some hips and then some legs coming down and I want to have them sort of just leaning a tiny bit looking up so that's how you get your sort of basic shapes as I use these these sort of blocks and then we can pad them out with some with some clothes a little bit of a t-shirt and some shorts If you're interested in, in learning more about how to paint people, then I have a lot more tutorials on this kind of thing in my Patreon. So I'm just going to change the angle of that arm a little bit. So they've got the string in their hand. And there we go, maybe a, a leg just further back and a leg like that. Lovely. And then we'll have a line up there and a nice kite shape on the beach. Now there's a lot of pencil going on here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my putty rubber and rub out, get the absolute basics like to really knock it back. Lovely. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some masking fluid to mask out the shape of the boy and the kite. So here's the masking fluid. And what it does is it allows us to mask off areas that can then be protected from the watercolour washes or layers going on top then we can wait for those layers to dry and then peel off the masking fluid and beneath it will be a little area of unpainted space. So for this shape down here. It's also another opportunity to maybe define the body shape. I've got a bit of a neck, shoulders, I'm not going to worry about masking off uh, like a, the string of the kite because that will be absolutely fine to just paint in. The masking fluid is now dry, <clears throat> excuse me, and now we're going to start putting in the washes. So I'm going to begin by just waking up some permanent rose and cadmium orange. I want to make a really nice uh, sort of dilute wash 
of those and we've also got some cobalt blue deep here this is my one stroke brush it's a one half inch size it's really really good for building up washes but I think what I'm going to do first is use my mop brush to just wet the page a little bit so we're going to wet the sky area so you can see that the masking fluid's all dried and the mop is just there to give brilliant large coverage over the place and uh, that is available in my shop as are all the brushes I use so let's go we're going to begin with some cobalt blue deep up the top it always makes me chuckle like I always think about when I was little and I used to paint some skies and I always just used to do a line of blue across the top of the page and that was it I didn't think about coming down the page okay so I've come down almost to the bottom I'm going to clean my brush off now I'm going to take some pink and some cadmium orange and I'm going to paint a line across the bottom. Just got to be a little bit careful of not sort of over mixing the blue tone into the pink, but I am just going to do one or two little sweeps in and then we're going to leave it at that. It's going to do it on its own. This section across the middle is a bit of ocean, so I'm just going to leave that whilst uh, the background dries for the moment. But now I'm going to look at the beach colours. So we're going to be looking up here at these tones. Yellow ochre is going to be very useful. So what I'm going to do is, I think I'm just going to actually going to go straight in onto the dry page because I quite like the texture of some of the dry brushing you get. So you can see this is the big difference of not adding uh, a wash with the, you know, just wetting the page with the mop brush first, but sometimes it's what you want. If you want to get a bit of dry brush texture onto the page. Because I want to get a bit of, yeah, a bit of up and down undulation into my beach. And whilst that dries, I'm going to take my size 2 brush, get a little bit of yellow ochre down here, add in a bit of burnt sienna, a bit of moon glow, and I'm looking for a sort of shadowy equivalent to the beach tones here, and that's pretty good. And what I want to do is to try and create all those wonderful sort of sandy divots on the beach that you get all the footsteps in the sand so my brush is uh, sort of wet-ish the page is starting to dry so we're going to get all sorts of different responses to how my brush goes down and that's what I quite like I think that's a really helpful way of creating these sort of natural landscapes by allowing the watercolour to sort of do half the job for you. So the one thing that is going to happen is as they get we get further away, the lines are just going to become a little bit smaller and fainter. So I'm just going to build that up along the beach and then we'll be ready to do our ocean. So having painted that all over, it just gives the beach a really nice sort of walked on feel. But the other thing is this sky, I've chosen to do this sky at a sort of end of day, beginning of day kind of feel where the sun is low and that means the light is casting across the sand and catching or every um, uneven peak and trough in the sand. So that's another reason why these two um, approaches go together doing a sunsetty sky and a textured sand. Now for the sea, I've got Payne's Grey, which my Payne's Grey is quite blue and then uh, cobalt turquoise. I've just sort of painted them in over the top of the, the cobalt blue deep, which I was painting for the sky. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start painting in with my size two brush. I've sort of angled quite low to the page. And to start off with, I'm just sort of starting at the top and then 
just bringing it down, allowing for little bits of unpainted space. And then as I, once I've got this filled up, we'll add a few low lights because we've got the highlights with the unpainted space. So that's not had a huge amount of time to dry, so there's a chance there's still a bit of wetness there. And what I'm going to do now with my size zero brush and just a bit of pure Payne's grey, I am going to try and sort of capture some low lights in the ocean, some ripples. Again, by having my brush angled fairly low to the page and just painting along and just sort of trying not to paint over the top of any of the nice highlights that I've managed. And as they get closer to the shore they can some of the uh, ripples can be a little bit bigger, a little bit longer. And that gradually forms our ocean. Now the paint is dried and I've peeled off the masking fluid and now it's time to start painting in our shapes. So I've got a, uh, a sort of peachy skin tone here which I am placing in and you can see it's rather similar to the sky behind so we need to make sure that we find a way of making sure it stands out and the way we do that is by thinking about the light and shade. So what I've done is I've just added a little bit of Payne's Grey and Burnt Sienna to this peach skin tone mixture and I'm now creating a low light with it. It's very subtle But what I would say with a lot of uh, figure painting is it's all about what you don't paint. It's about allowing the human eye to sort of do half the work. So I've just got those basic colours in. Let's get the kite painted. So I think I'll do a nice brightly coloured kite. We'll do some red. Um, but instead of just simply painting in the shapes in a flat colour, what we're going to do is we're going to just clean the brush off, get it nice and, and clean and wet, and I'm just using that paint I painted on the initial outline to just draw it down, and then I'm going to take a little... We want to get a sense of that ripple of the wind. So I'll do it again. So I'll do a little bit of a, a line up there. Then clean wet brush, draw the colour along and then we'll just get a little bit more colour. To attach it all back. Meanwhile down here, I'm going to get a bit of cadmium yellow. pick out the t-shirt but again I'm not just painting it in flat I'm, I'm sort of painted in a, a bit of it now I'll clean my brush off use the clean wet brush a little bit more water maybe to just spread that color out a bit which results in a lovely sort of of a uh, sense of light and shade and I've got a bit of yellow ochre here we 
which really helps suddenly create that t-shirt and make it a bit more uh, bright and and three-dimensional um, right what color shall I have the rest of the kite I think I might go for I might go for pink actually it's a bit of a unexpected color it is similar to the red but it's not quite the same I was always brought up being told pink and red were a terrible colour combination, but I really, I quite like them. There we go. So we're just, basically, all of this is using colour intelligently by sort of painting in an area painting in an area, cleaning off your brush and using the colour that you've got on the page there to at least begin creating a sort of rounded shape that you may well have to add to, but it just means that you're starting with a lovely light tone. And when you're painting things in miniature as well, colour shrinks and that might sound a bit strange but I would always think about adding just a little bit of a of a sort of cooler shadow tone knock back the color when I'm so I'm painting this guy's hair but I'm just giving it a bit more shadowy tone giving that of that yellow ochre just to have knocked it back it's all it's all ways in which we make these things a bit more realistic and I'm just going to keep going back into the, the skin tone and then now for the face I'm actually going to bring this shadow right up help with the contours and we really aren't going to see much at all so I'm just going to use some of this shadowy skin tone for a nose maybe bring that shadow up for the eye contour And to be honest, I feel like you can, you've already sort of got a slight sense that that is a face, but I'm going to take a tiny bit of Payne's Grey. And give him an eye, but it's all about a feel you get. So I think that is quite enough. So I'm going to add just a tiny bit more detail to the shorts and you can see it's still a bit wet. But I'm really happy with that little person. Okay so I'm going to get the rigger brush in now which is the long slender bristled brush and I'm going to take a deep breath <laughs> and use a bit of Payne's Grey. I'll, um, I'll start off by doing that and then, whoops, not bad, not bad. And then once we get up to the top there, we can always use a four tenths brush to just add in that bit on there. So I'm going to let this all dry 100% now, rub out the pencil and see what we've got left. So we've got the pencil rubbed out, the paper peel, or the paint, the tape peeled off. And now it's just time for one or two last little bits. So I've got my um, four tenths brush and just uh, getting that string connected. And I'm actually going to place a 
tiny bit more shadow just where he's standing on the beach. So that's just with a bit of Payne's Grey. And just a little bit more Payne's Grey actually down, down the back. And there we go, your summer scene flying a kite. Thanks so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed that. I'm enjoying putting more of these simple landscapes into our tutorials. And that just so happens to be something that's a new feature of my brand new book, A Year of Watercolour. We've just got this introduction to doing slightly broader scenes as well as the favorites of the flower painting and the birds and the animals and the insects. Um, you can pre-order your copy just by heading to the episode notes below. So don't forget to do that. Um, and without much further ado, I will say thank you so much for watching. Thank you to my patrons. They uh, enable us to keep creating videos like these that everyone can enjoy. And if you enjoyed it, then hit the like button and comment below to let me know how you got on with that one. And of course, if you never want to miss another video, then hit the like, uh, hit the what? The subscribe button, that's the one. The subscription button and the little notification bell. And we'll see you again next time. Bye.